This week, down at the Barnes, we bring you an update on the Lotus Elite. Hello and welcome to Down at the Barns. Today I want to talk to you about the uh, Lotus Elite. So a bit of an update on that. We've spent a lot of time engineering things, love engineering things. And we've just engineered a 2 to 1 or a 2.7 to 1 reduction box to go onto the 120 kilowatt motor. So it's the same motor that we use in the Mini. We've used it in a few other products, Porsche 356, Chevy Speedster. We've also got a plan to take it up to 150 kilowatt for things like the Land Rover where they're obviously a little bit heavier and need a little bit more power at the top end. The actual gearbox itself is actually relatively short, the reduction box, probably only 150 millimetres. But obviously we need to compensate for the gearbox tail that was very, very long. So we've actually built that up uh, on, on the rear end using some posts and then we end up at the uh, same point on the prop shaft as we were originally, so we used the original prop shaft. For the front, we've got a bar that goes across and then we're going to weld some mounts onto the chassis. Uh, it's going to be held reasonably rigidly in there, but we're not going to, get, we're not, we're not going to have the same level of vibration as we do on a, uh, on a petrol engine. So let's, um, let's take it up in the air and then you can see it from underneath. So we're underneath the car now, obviously. Uh, here's the gearbox, as I, as, I, as I talked about, and here's the extension that brings it back onto the original engine mount, uh, uh, gearbox mount. So, and then on the back here, we've got just got a flange, which goes onto the prop shaft. Pretty simple. Two to one reduction box, which boosts the torque to over 600 Newton meters. Um, and we've also got 2.7 to one, uh, which will take it up near 800. So we can, we can pick up many different um, vehicles using this and of course with the flexible extensions on the rear we can actually pretty easily go, um, you know, adjust it to fit in in any front engine rear wheel drive car of which there are a lot right so so it, for us it's it's actually um, quite a versatile uh, installation water comes out the side uh, that's all very easy to access and then we've got space uh, behind we've got loads of space to put batteries in so the car's going to have 44 kilowatt hour pack uh, we can put 10 modules in the front six in the rear uh, I've got the battery box so in a minute I can show you uh, how that fits and we can talk about where the charger and the inverter are going to go but I'm really happy with this so uh, normally we use CAD this time we didn't and uh, to be fair it's worked out really well so here's the original prop shaft off the Lotus. Um, universal joint at this end, it goes on to the um, differential. And then at this end, uh, it's got a spline shaft that goes into the rear of the gearbox uh, with another universal joint here. And this spline acts as the sliding joint. It's also got uh, an inner and an outer shaft which is then coupled by rubber to try and take a little bit of, uh, or give, give the prop shaft a little bit of compliance. So that's the original one, and we need to replicate that. Uh, we need to actually make it slightly longer, about this, this sort of length, and put a flange on this end to pick up on the end of the gearbox. So, as I just said, we've got about a six degree included angle on the prop shaft, so the universal joint will not be able to run through that angle without giving us some level of vibration. So if we want to try and make the car smooth, we need to move it to a different kind of joint. And that's this, this is a CV joint, constant velocity joint. Um, this comes out of a BMW, I think. Uh, and the, bit, the reason I've got it is I actually want this piece in here. Uh, so I'm gonna cut that out, uh, put a new CV joint on it with a spline. We've got um, compliance here to, in, in the uh, sliding joint here, so we don't need another sliding joint in the system. The other end will join onto 
uh, the tube, and then uh, a universal joint at the far end. So this will actually go on to the uh, differential, and then the front end will go straight onto the end of the uh, gearbox. So hopefully, we won't get any nasty vibration from the prop shaft. So let's have a look in the back. How cool is this for a stay on the rear? Very lovely. It's really, really cool. Anyway, that's Lotus for you. So there's the rear battery. That's got six modules in it. Luckily enough, we've got a few holes where fuel pipes came in um, through the, basically the rear of the, the spare wheel well. So we've got good access to take the, um, the high voltage cables out. Um, it's a little bit difficult to actually fix the, the um, battery in to the fiberglass. Don't really want to drill through it too much. Uh, it's double layered and with a big gap between it. So um, <clears throat> looking to actually bond a bracket into the fiberglass so that we can actually attach the back battery in there. Very strong in, in, in terms of um, bonding it in. It's just trying to make minimal intrusion into the car really. So that's that's a pretty neat package. I'm, I'm really happy with the way that that's fitting in there. So we come back to the last little bit really, which is the charge port. Now interestingly, the car had two um, fuel fillers on either side, which is a bit novel. Um, so we could use that, but we have to cut quite a big hole in here. And then the, 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 the cap that we'd have to make would protrude, protrude through the body and things. So it's not ideal. Um, I think the other one is the one that we all use uh, in through the rear number plate. Um, but that's quite difficult because we've got restricted access um, just in, 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 the, in the aperture here in the rear bumper. So those, those are the two that um, I'm toying with at the moment. I was looking potentially to put it inside the boot and bring the cable through the corner, uh, and then having a cable running through here and then closing the, the boot lid. But this is flush fitting, so uh, the cable won't really fit through the corner, unfortunately. So I think it's gonna end up being either on the side of the car or in the back here. Um, you have to come back next time and have a look. So please, subscribe to the channel. Uh, and come and join us next time to see some progress on the car and uh, hopefully we'll have it up and running soon enough.